Here are 10 common problems you're likely to face if you use FL Studio and I'm going to show you how to fix them. So if you're new, hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. So the very first problem we're going to be fixing is lags and glitches which happens especially when you're mixing in FL Studio. Let me play so you here for example. So if you're facing this kind of problem, it's pretty easy to fix. All you have to do is come to your options, audio setting, and we're going to come to the buffer length, okay? Now, typically, if you're mixing or you're making beats, you can kind of make do with a slower buffer setting. So I'm going to click 512, and then here it sounds now. And if 512 doesn't fix it, just come to audio settings again, change it to 1024 or 2048. And now you can hear we don't have any more issues with glitches and pops in FL Studio. Another common problem you likely face when using FL Studio to record vocals is lags in your vocal recording. Like when you say something, it's like it doesn't hit with the beat on time. Let me show you how to fix that. So to fix lags in your vocal recordings or any instrument you're trying to record in FL Studio is pretty easy. What you have to do is just come to your options, audio settings, buffer length. Most times your software or FL Studio might show you 512 in the buffer length settings. This is too slow for most vocal recording sessions. So you need to take it to as low as possible, as low as your computer CPU can handle because lower buffer length does a drag more CPU, okay? So for vocal recordings, 256 should be good enough, should be fast enough to reduce latency in your recordings. And I also recommend you switch to your audio driver. Click that, you can even get much lower buffer settings in your audio driver. For example, you see I can go as low as 64, 32 bit or even 60 bit samples, right? So it, it makes it even more accurate and less lag, way less lag or latency in your vocal recording. So many times have you tried to open a project in FL Studio all of a sudden to see that your files or some of your files have gone missing. Let me show you how to fix that easily. So all you have to do is click the locate sample that shows right beside it and then try to find where the sample is located. Maybe you switched hard drive or you changed things around a little bit in your PC, just go to the location. And I found that it was actually in a different folder than it was supposed to be. So I just double click it and it's going to automatically detect it. And then you can just simply click reload project. And then you can click yes if you want to add this folder to your project. So I can click yes, so it will be added and then it's going to restart. And you can see I have the audio file right here. I do not have any missing files anymore. Sometimes it's difficult installing some plugins into FL Studio. Let me show you how to quickly fix the issue of not finding the plugins you installed in FL Studio. So when you install a plugin, you're typically supposed to come to the plugin section, then you scan and then it will show you installed and then you see maybe a new section appear or just maybe under generators or effects. Now, if you don't find this happening after you scan, you can't find the plugin. Just come to options, come to manage plugins and then you can see this panel right here. You can add directory. So you can click add and try to locate on your PC where the file was installed on. Most times, if, you, if you're using Windows, most times it will be in your PC, that is your actual hard drive, where you can go there and then you just add it up. Maybe, for example, VST under program files. I could have like a VST folder. I can just select that and then click select folder and then it will be added to my directory. And after doing that, I will simply scan again by simply right click. I simply right clicking and then refresh plugin list past scan. When it's on refreshing, you should see it pop up right here and you can install your plugin successfully. If you have plugins that you no longer have use for and it's taking up space in your FL Studio browser, I'm going to show you how to take it away because even after it's uninstalling it on your PC, it still remains in your project or plugin picker. Let me show you how to remove it permanently. So right here, for example, I have some plugins. Let's say I do not have any need for Ozone 9 anymore. It's very easy to remove. So you come to your documents, you come to image line, and then you come to FL Studio, and then you come to presets, and then we want to get into plugin database. And then if it's an effect, you can come into effects, but if it's a plugin that makes sound like um, a VST, you can come into um, generators, but I'm going to go to effects. And you can see I have all these sounds. So I do not want isotope ozone nine anymore. So I can just highlight all the ozone nines, for example. So I highlight them and if I delete them, see they're all gone. And when I open FL Studio, if I click the drop down, you can see I do not have Ozone 9 anymore. It's all gone. 
If you find yourself constantly searching for plugins that you use often, I want to show you a way to easily organize your plugin so that you don't have to keep scanning your screen for what plugins you need. So if you're using Windows or Mac, simply come to Documents, Image Line, and then scroll down to FL Studio. Again, you come down to Presets. Again, we'll come into Plugin Database, and then we'll come into Effects. So let's say, for example, I want to organize all my Auto-Tune plugins. So I'm going to highlight all of this, cut it out or copy. It could, you could copy it or cut, it doesn't matter. Then create a new folder and just name it Auto-Tune. Then open the folder and paste it in here. So when I open FL Studio and I click the drop down, you can see Auto-Tune right here, all organized right here. So I don't have to keep scanning my screen for where auto-tune is. And you can do this for any amount of plugins. I know how frustrating it can be when you're organizing sounds on your playlist and some sounds just keep going off grid like it's not on beat properly. Let me show you how to quantize on your playlist so that everything sounds like it's on grid and it fits perfectly into your arrangements and production. So what you have to do is highlight all the sounds on your playlist, then change it to bar mode or the timing you prefer, then simply press shift and Q. You can see they're all snapped back into grid instead of being um, off grid like they were before shift and q now it's all snapped back and that's how to fix sounds that are off grid in your project in fl studio another common problem you face while using fl studio is when you bring in the sample and it sounds weird on the channel rack compared to how it was sounding in the browser let me show you how to fix those issues so for example we currently have this sound and this is how it sounds on the browser so how do we fix that? Simply click the wrench tool right here, and then you see this, it's currently on C4, it wants it to be on C5, which is middle C. So you right click this, and it's when you play it now, and the sound in the browser, so it's the same now. Another issue you also face is stuff like this. And this is how it sounds originally. This happens most times when you've replaced too many samples on a particular, um, clip so how do we fix that it's also easy just click this open right here and then you see time you want to right click and then reset it to none and then we play it now and then here see it's the same thing so that's how you fix that issue that you face in fl studio another issue which is very common in fl studio channel rack is when your samples keeps repeating even though it's not a loop let me show you how to turn it off so for example when i just press play how do we fix that? Simply click the sampler right here and then come down to use loop points and turn it off. And then when I press play, when it's on, off, and you see that's fixed easily. Now, a common problem you also face when using FL Studio's parametric EQ2 is that you won't get the best of it unless you turn on this setting. And it's a big problem if you do not turn it on. So let's play this audio and see how it reacts in the EQ. So it just show you this waveform, but we can actually get more details out of it. And it's very easy. Just click this play button sign right here and then come down to heat map, right click it to enable it and also right click enhance frequency and also right click high precision. So you really get more information out of it. And this is how it looks when you press play now. So if you found any of these tips helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and save it for later so you can keep coming back to it when you face any one of these issues. I remember Sir Classic. This is SE Toots. See you soon. Cheers.